Flood situation in Nigeria is our concern tonight. So join us as we deliberate on that in this edition of Weekend File. Have a good evening and welcome to the program. Massive flooding has been sweeping through many parts of Nigeria. Uh, the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency had some months ago advised state governments on uh, evacuating residents in flood-prone areas, noting that heavy rains could lead to possible loss of lives and property. About 28 states, 275 local government areas would be affected. In fact, most of them are already inundated. In Yoruba State, for instance, several houses and farmlands in several seven council areas have been washed away, threatening harvest in the state. This cropping season, and uh, of course, uh, homes of many residents of Lagos State have continued to be flooded each time it rains in Ibadan. Flooding rendered many residents homeless and their property worth millions of naira destroyed. In Kaduna, many houses have been submerged, forcing many residents out of their homes. The story is the same in Edo, Delta, Anambra, Rivers, Bielsa, and many other states across Nigeria. And so tonight we will examine the flood situation in the country. And our guest tonight on Weekend File is the Director Research and Forecasting National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Kayode Fabomi, who will be joining us when it's time for us to have a conversation with him in the course of the program. My name is Kirian Umayo. Let's take the news first. To effectively contain the spread of the coronavirus disease across the globe, the deployment of the COVID-19 vaccine should be done in an equitable and affordable manner rather than on the basis of the highest bidder. This was the position of Vice President Yemi Shebajo at the virtual meeting uh, 2020 Euro-Africa Forum themed towards a realistic Euro-African partnership during the and beyond the COVID-19 era. State House correspondent Jida Onifade has that report. It's a sign of the times that this a global crisis calls for global partnerships, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says, and explaining that if COVID-19 exists in any part of the world, it remains a significant threat to every part of the world. As the Vice President observes, Europe should work closely with Africa to ensure that when a vaccine is finally deployed, it should be made available at an affordable and an accessible manner. Vice President Oshibachi also speaks about Nigerians' efforts in mitigating the impact of the COVID-19 on the economy, noting that Nigerians' priority is to ward off a deep recession while welcoming the debt servicing support initiative of the G20, which he says will no doubt bring some relief to relevant African countries, the vice president, however, observes that it remains inadequate because it does not address the problem of commercial debt service obligations and therefore calls on the European Union to lend its weight to this initiative, which he describes as very important for Africa. There are of course many other matters on which Africa and the EU must continue to collaborate and to which we must use the opportunity of this summit to move ahead on investment and trade, human capital development and the proper management of migration are areas in which our partnerships should continue to be built. I'm confident that we will continue to deepen such relationships which must continue to be anchored on enabling both regions to attain the social and economic objectives in an increasingly environmentally friendly and, digit and digital world. The Euro-African Forum aims to foster stronger collaboration between Europe and Africa and better promote a shared green and inclusive growth, among other objectives. In the State House, Jude Onifadi, and your news. Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and the Social Development Sadia Omar Farouk has handed over 118 trucks of food commodities to Bauchi state government as COVID-19 palliative. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that the minister also commiserated with the government and people of Bauchi state on the recent flood incidents that affected seven local government areas in the state. 
continuation of the federal government's effort towards cushioning the effect of COVID-19 pandemic on Nigeria, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, handed over tons of maize, millet, and sagam for distribution to the vulnerable in Bauchi State. We all know that the outbreak of the pandemic has brought about changes and challenges to our normal ways of living. Most obvious of this is on the vulnerable persons that depend largely on others for their daily survival and other persons of concern that deserve support in terms of basic needs. Thank Mr. President, the President of the Republic, President Muhammad Buhari, for finding it fit and worthy to give this kind of palliation to most states or to all the states all over the Federation. On the recent flood disaster that affected some local government areas in the state, the minister directed the National Emergency Management Agency to take stock of the damages caused by the flood. In Bauchi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. Commercial flight operations have resumed at the international wing of the Muratala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, after five months of closure due to COVID-19 lockdown. Michael Lale reports that they both Inbound and outbound passengers were subjected to rigorous COVID-19 checks. The first commercial flight in more than five months arriving from the Middle East. It is a landmark achievement in the fight against COVID-19. But beyond the glamour is the reality that the pandemic has changed the mode of screening at the airports. The drop zone now accommodates less outing while a makeshift structure has been erected at the entrance to take care of hand washing, temperature checks, luggage disinfection and physical distancing. The process, which is in stages, gives assurance of safety to passengers while the fight against the virus continues. The great job they do, the social distance, the mark on ground, the spraying for bags, the temperature checking, all the, the effort they do is a great effort. Even you cannot see it in all over the world. I'm, I'm happy that everything's coming back to normal. And I feel like everyone should like always take precaution, always wear a mask, always you know prevent, like always use social distancing, prevent contact with others as much as possible, and then life will become normal. Agencies at the airport are strengthening surveillance in spite of the remarkable measures put in place. For a start, I think we'll be having about 1,280 passengers daily. And what we have at uh, MMA, we can conveniently accommodate them. You know, we have two fingers, we have this one and the other one. So even if you have two flights at the same time, you can conveniently park one on the Echo and the other one at uh, Delta. The control starts from the disembarkation of the aircraft. We make sure that passengers do not come out in rush. They come out in quantum and observe the, the signages that is on ground, which we must have seen. Only two airlines operated from the international wing of the airport. A figure which increased to seven by Monday next week. In Lagos, Michael Walale, NT News. The rehabilitated portion of Rigachikum Bridge along Kajuna Zaria Highway has again caved in, leaving commuters stranded Friday night. Abdullahi Mohammed reports that uh, excavation work has begun on the damaged portion. A couple of hours after the reopening of the Rigachikum Bridge, upon completion of remedial work, there was heavy rainfall yesterday, and that transition base once again caved in. Contractors are pointing to another hall that is on the other bridge, which is the alternative bridge that is being used by traffic right now, that is responsible for allowing water to flow into it and to the other transition base, which caved yesterday. Thousands of commuters were stranded here as a result of impatience. I've spoken to the traffic managers. They told me that they've been able to diffuse that traffic at about 1 a.m. There is a diversion, a detour, so that uh, other people will be diverted to follow the other lane. And as you can see, we are still on it. 
and our men work assiduously yesterday so that they can see that uh, all other traffics follow the other direction. With our ears on ground, we got the wind of a traffic standstill at Kao Kaduna, which is a major confluence of vehicles from across the country. So we hit the road on a bike. Majority of those caught in the traffic mess were the articulated vehicles. The bone of contention was that a personnel of the Kaduna State Traffic Management Agency was alleged to have physically molested a truck driver. In protest, they did what they know best, blocking the road with their trucks. And the consequences were colossal. After hours of persuasion, they heeded. But commuters are not happy with their mode of protest. I don't think they should go to that length. I think they should be humane. As much as they think about themselves, they should think about the other members of the society. I didn't know. I just came in and look at what I went through. I spent almost about two hours now before I get down to India. I had to take on foot. This is not the first time the truck drivers have protested in this manner. And observers say the authorities must act fast to put an end to this form of protest, which puts thousands in a difficult situation. In Kaduna, Abdullah Muhammad, NT News. The newly appointed chief executive officers for some agencies under the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture have been charged to come on board with positive ideas that will scale up efforts being made to build the nation's economy for a sustainable growth. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed gave the charge while addressing the new CEOs. Anthony Forson reports. The chief executives, nine in number, has two females, charging them to assimilate President Muhammad Buhari's priority areas, which is guiding the administration. The Information and Culture Minister said, focus is on building a thriving and sustainable economy, enhance social inclusion to reduce poverty, as well as enlarge agricultural output for food security and export, among others. Of particular relevance to the various agencies as it relates to culture and tourism, Laya Mohamed said the ministry has commenced work on areas that will position the sector through its ongoing reforms, just as it prepares to lift the creative industry from the COVID-19 impact. The implementation committee will set to look at the well prepared and labor part committee report of the creative industry. Which, has, which was triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic, is currently working to provide guidelines for lifting the industry in the post-COVID era. The federal government, he said, is doing so much with little resources. Therefore, their efforts must be channeled towards promoting diversification of the economy. Yes, we are diversifying the economy to reduce the dependence on oil. But the situation today has been worsened by the COVID-19, which has stifled economies around the world. Yet, due to the depth management of resources, this administration is engaged in massive infrastructural renewal, whether in the areas of roads, bridges, rail or power. The minister reminded them to keep up with the hard work that brought them this far for a call to national duty. Responding on behalf of his colleagues, Professor Sonde Ododo of the National Theatre expressed gratitude for the confidence reposed in them by President Muhammad Buhari. The testifies that this time we have chosen so well because we have square, square pegs in square holes. The expectation is so high and we cannot afford to fail you, sir. Their appointments took effect from the 1st of September. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The Director General National Council for Arts and Culture, Olushegun Ronshewe, has called on key players in the culture and tourism sector to work towards a delivery of a solid destination in Nigeria. The DG made the call while inaugurating the Creative Industry Post-COVID-19 Initiative. Implementation subcommittees in Abuja, Oinia Kaloka reports that the committees are made up of 13 subunits. 
At the virtual inauguration, the Director of General National Council for Arts and Culture, Olushigo Roshi, we called on members of the committee to look at the impacts of the pandemic to the industry and provide solutions on how to move the sector forward. Whatever government wants to do, we have involved every sector player. All these people have suffered a major setback during COVID-19. How best can we help them? This help could come from government but never get to them. But this time, under my leadership, we will get to the right people. To articulate the challenges, a document by the council was presented to the members of the committee. Members of the committee, drawn from the hospitality and tourism subsector, creative arts and media, are expected to submit their reports in the next seven weeks. Oyinna Kalu Oka, NTN News. Ekiti State Government is set to create more wealth for its people and Nigerians through the attainment of a special economic zone that is knowledge-based and ICT-driven. Governor Kayode Fayemi said this when he visited management of Nigerian Export Processing Zones Authority here in Abuja. The Ekiti State economy is driven by agriculture and knowledge. The fountain of knowledge is about to give birth to something new. It is Nigeria's first service-based economic zone driven by the digital economy. Why can't Ekiti be the seat of medical tourism in this drive for knowledge economy? The visit is to advance discussions on the actualization of jobs for the future. That's what's driving what we're doing in agri-tech, in biotechnology, in information technology in business outsourcing. With the belief that a functional industrialized economy will ensure growth and wealth creation, Managing Director of NEBSA, Adesoji Adesuba, says for this to happen, incentives and the right structures must be in place. Knowledge, like the governor said, is a very huge sector that we have hardly tapped anything from it. Just from technology alone, skills acquisition, and just from coding. The knowledge zone is anchored around talent produced by universities in Ekiti and neighboring states. A planned mini city equipped with reliable infrastructure to include power and broadband for attracting services like business process outsourcing, data leveling, software development and engineering, in addition to startups focused on critical sectors of healthcare, education, agriculture and consumer markets. Benny Adams, NTA News. The All Progressives Congress APC has flagged off its governorship campaign for the October 10 election in Akure. At the rally attended by a number of APC governors, the party's governorship candidate and incumbent governor of the state, Uluarotimi Akeredulu, while receiving the party's flag, said the mission is to consolidate on the positive transformation of the state. Abiola Ario reports. It was a gathering that brought together political bigwigs in the party from across the country who came to affirm their support for the re-election bid of the incumbent governor, Oluwaro Timiakeredolu, presenting the party's flag to the candidates, the chairman, APC Kiatika Committee, who is also the governor of Yobe State, urged the people of the state to make the right choice by re-electing Akeredolu, saying his achievements are testimonies of his good works. ABC, the Bundo States, is united, is stronger, and we have to provide cohesion and the support to win this election peacefully. If you are looking for evidence of commitment to an ideology of progressive government, we don't go any further than what is already shown itself here in the Bundo State. Governor Akeridolu said he is determined to transform the state to an enviable height if given the opportunity. The national leader of the party, Bola Tinubu, was also in Akure where he met with traditional rulers from across the state who came to reaffirm their support for the re-election aspiration of Governor Akeridolu in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NTA News. And uh, more of politics, the All Progressive Congress APC is intensifying its campaign 
drive in Waltz in Edo Central to ensure it covers everywhere in the area before the election on the 19th of this month. Agatha Aguare has details of the campaign so far in the senatorial district. The team has been campaigning in Edo Central since three days, visiting wards in the local government areas under the zone. In Ewo Imi, the people welcomed them with a special rendition. Wards 4 to 7 Emu, 8 to 9 Ilushi in East and Southeast, and wards 8 to 10 Ekon in Igweben also had the opportunity to meet with the campaign train. The candidate also met with the people of wards 7 and 8 Ewo and Ujabole Ward 2. At Ibore Wards 1 to 4, Pastor Izayamu promises to make Asian Central an investment hub. Assurances of Greater Edo under APC also came from the former national chairman of the APC. If every governor come and do a little more, and that governor come and do a little more, that is how society grow from strength to strength. The candidate paid homage to the Onoji of Ewu, Abdurazaki Ojefo, and Zaiki of Ekmon, George Edobo, at the palace of the Omonoji of Ewoimi Kingdom, Peter Usifo. From Edo Central, Agatha Egwareoju, NT News. As of June 2020, the capital adequate ratio of general bank stood at 20 percent which is above the 15 percent regulatory limit this is reflected in its financial performance statement that assessed the first six months of 2020 the year under review amaka Uwo has more on that Figures from Zenith Bank PLC shows a 17% increase in the profit after tax from 88 billion naira within the first six months period ended in 2019 to 103.8 billion naira of same period in the year 2020. The bank's gross earnings grew from 332 billion naira to 346 billion naira, driven by 6% growth year on year. The non interest income data shows that the first six months in the year 2020 on the review had 116 billion naira, a significant increase from the previous year. Earning per share increased by 17% to 3 naira 30 kobo in the first half of 2020. Total deposits as at June 30th, 2020 grew by 15%, put at 4.9 trillion naira, as against 4.26 trillion naira recorded in December 2019. In the bank's deposit by business segment, small and medium enterprises account for 41%, retail had 32%, while public and corporate banking accounts for 11% and 16%. With this performance, the management is optimistic that Zenith Bank is well positioned to take advantage of new opportunities to grow the loan book and weather any shock in the economic environment. Established in 1990, Zenith Bank has 390 branches across Nigeria and 45 branches across Africa and the globe with a staff strength of over 6,527 people. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. And to ensure strict compliance with the laid down procedure for the establishment of private universities, the National Universities Commission has undertaken a fact-finding visit to Kano State to verify proposed degree programs preparatory to formal accreditation of some private universities located in that state. Mohamed Rabi Ali has that report. Estimated 2 million prospective candidates sitting for joint admission and matriculation examination board seeking placement into 177 public universities for degree programs. However, only few succeed due to low capacity of public universities to accommodate more. Therefore, the establishment of private universities in the country is to complement federal and state government's desire to provide quality tertiary education in view of the limited admission space in public universities. The team visitation panel from the National Universities Commission to some proposed private universities is to ensure strict compliance with extant rule for the establishment of tertiary institutions. 
Uh, we conduct two visits, first and second. So we are here to look at the facilities um, the proposed Madam Babacha American University has. On a general note, we are satisfied with what we have seen. We have seen a lot of effort in trying to meet our, our guidelines. We are still struggling to find space for university education for less than 1% of our population. Point at us some of the areas that we need to improve, and we are happy that uh, uh, we are okay with all their uh, observations, and we are ready to implement the corrections. The emergence of private universities in Kano will no doubt change the landscape of education, as those who cannot gain admission into the public universities can comfortably pursue their degree programs in such universities. Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTA News. Abia State Governor Okeze Wazo has assured the management of NTA ABA of his administration's support in fixing dilapidated sections of the station. The governor made the promise during an assessment visit to NTA ABA Benson Osalebe reports. Governor Ibaz undertook a guided tour of the station's facilities, which include the studios, editing suites, general manager's office, others are copper lodge and collapsed perimeter fence. Moved by the level of dilapidation, the governor promised to fix some of the problems within the coming week, noting that NTABA plays a critical role in informing, educating, and entertaining the masses and must not be allowed to go down. The service will render, especially. At a time like this, when we need the grassroots to understand uh, the battle against COVID and to disseminate information to the rural areas, uh, nobody can beat the reach of NTA in Abia and in Nigeria. And uh, if we allow NTA to die, then our major market uh, will be in jeopardy. We say thank you once again for finding time to come. We will keep partnering with the administration to inform the people of activities of government which you lead. With the bond between the state government and NTA about management, the station is expected to receive a facelift soon. In Aba Benson Osabebe, NTA News. Yeah, thank you, Benson. President Muhammad Buhari salutes Mr. Femi Onayemi, a man who has put over 50 years into active journalism practice. As he turns 80 September 6, 2020, the president salutes the commitment of Pa Onayemi to a profession he loved dearly, serving vigorously as a reporter, editor, now editorial consultant in a journey of over five decades that saw him through publications like Daily Times, Daily Sketch, The Punch, National Concord, The Mail, and many others. At the princely age of 80, the president wishes the veteran journalist happy celebration and longer life in good health and all round prosperity. We are watching Weekend File on the network service of the NTA and they will examine the flood situation in Nigeria. And our guest tonight is the Director of Research and Forecasting National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Kayode Fabumi. He will be joining me at the conversation segment.